Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and welcome to episode two of our image management for Windows Virtual Desktop series. Last episode, we talked about Packer. Uh, this episode, we're going to talk about Azure Image Builder. So we'll start off with talking about the differences between the two. Now, there's going to be a lot of similarities because Azure Image Builder is actually based upon Packer. But unlike Packer, it's actually a first party service from Microsoft. And if you paid attention in the last episode, we actually ran all of the um, demo from a VM where we had Packer installed. In uh, AIB, it's serverless, or at least for, for the running of Packer. So we don't need any IaaS, which I always appreciate. Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not saying that AIB is more secure than Packer because they have almost the same uh, capabilities. But what you do need to do is be more secure by default with Azure Image Builder. So uh, we'll see a couple of things about that as we, uh, as we go through the demo. Previously, we had a shared image gallery and an image definition for Packer. That remains exactly the same for Azure Image Builder. The addition of a managed identity. Now this ties in with the security stuff we were talking about before. You need a managed identity for Azure Image Builder. You can have one for Packer, but you need one for AIB. And then we're gonna have a look at how you need to build an image and you need an image builder template to do so. And that's how you get your image into the shared image gallery. Let's have a look at some code. We're gonna have five steps here. Uh, you can see from the title of the um, individual scripts that I've got that we're gonna split them up into different roles. This one, is a setup you should only ever need to do once. Now, in my Azure subscription, I don't have anything for Azure Image Builder configured. We have got a blank piece of paper as far as Azure Image Builder is concerned. Let's start by setting a couple of variables. We'll get our location. Now, Azure Image Builder is a, is a public preview service. It is available in five or six different uh, different locations, West Europe being one of them. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna stick the images in the shared image gallery and that can then distribute the images globally. So where you run uh, share um, as your image builder from is fairly immaterial in my opinion. All right, so we're gonna get our location, we're gonna get our subscription ID and we're gonna get a name for our resource group. You know I said Azure Image Builder was a public preview, that's why the modules for Azure Image Builder are um, pre-release, so when we install the modules for Azure Image Builder, we need to have that allow pre-release parameter configured for install module. This function that I'm going to dot source into memory for running later, is the same one that we used in episode one to confirm our, cust our uh, Azure Marketplace image um, uh, properties. Now then, we also need to register the specific providers for Azure Image Builder. Now, you probably, def probably need to do that as uh, if you're doing Image Builder for the first time. You'll also need but let's face it, you should probably have Key Vault, Storage, and Virtual Machines already registered for your subscription. If you don't, if you've got a blank empty test subscription that you've just run up for this, then you'll need to register those uh, providers. Now we need to create a resource group. Easy peasy. So that is a blank and empty resource group. We need to put that managed identity into that resource group and give it permissions to that resource group. So let's create a couple of variables. We're gonna get a random number. And the reason I'm doing that is because the, um, the image definition role name and the identity name do need to be unique. 
So I'm just going to grab a single random number and use it uh, to make them unique. And also I'm going to use the same number for both so I know that they're tied together. I'm going to create the, uh, the identity now in that same resource group and with the name that we have just created. That's done. Now we're going to get the details of that identity. And I'm going to set the ID into a text file because I'm going to need that ID later in some of the other um, scripts. So we're just going to save that for later. Obviously, if you're doing all this in one script, you could just stick it in a variable. You don't have to stick it in a text file. And again, we're going to save the principal ID for use later on in the script. And in that case, we can save it in a variable. We're going to bring down the JSON file, which is provided by the Azure Image Builder team to create this managed identity. And we're going to bring it from that URL, which you can see is just from GitHub. I'm not amazingly happy with downloading random stuff from the internet and then run it in your environment. So we're going to have a quick look inside that JSON file and see what's going on. So invoke web request is the download. We're going to do a couple of replacements inside the text. And then we're going to um, put that file onto our file system. And now we'll have a look. So we can see all we're doing is we're adding a read to our galleries for um, for the uh, root, the images, and the versions, and also right into our gallery image version. That all makes perfect sense, seeing as we're going to stick our image into a shared image gallery. And because we need to manipulate the image, then we're, we're doing write, read, and delete. And the assignable scopes is our resource group that we've just created. So all of that looks fine. In fact, it's fairly short, so I would say that you probably don't need to download this. You could save it, and in fact, you could change the actions. So if you need the Azure Image Builder to go and look at some storage, maybe in a different resource group, then you could configure it here. Always look at and understand random downloads from the internet. So now we're going to create that role definition. Lovely. And now we're going to assign that definition to our identity. Let's have a look inside the portal. And we'll have a look inside that resource group. And now we can see we've got the identity and nothing else. Now let's look at I am and we'll do role assignments. We can see we've got this role here. And if we look inside the role permissions, we've got exactly those permissions that we just saw in the JSON file. So read for galleries, um, read for images, read and write for image versions, and read, write, and delete for images. Now let's create the shared image gallery. Now this isn't probably a fair comparison to episode one, because in episode one we had the gallery and the um, resource group pre-set up. I just thought for the uh, Azure Image Builder I'd give you end-to-end -end, all in PowerShell a script to set it up um, for yourself. All of this you could do in the GUI if you want. Um, it's it's a single time setup so you know I'd per be perfectly happy for you to do it in the GUI. That's done let's check back in our resource group and we can see now we've got our image gallery in our resource group. 
So that's it. So that's the setup that you need to do in your subscription as a prerequisite to using Azure Image Builder. The next thing we need to have a look at is our per image SKU. We've got a number of variables in addition to what we configured for the once only setup stuff that we need to know. Basically just names of things. Um, that's fine. We've got our um, function that we looked at in episode one, which is our get Azure image info. So that's a custom function that I've written to verify that we're on the latest version of the WVD Office 365 Windows 10 multi-session marketplace image. And we're seeing we're getting the content of that ID that we saved last time. So let's run this and we'll step through getting all of our variables set up. We'll dot source the function into memory and then we'll use that uh, function to go and grab the correct information about our marketplace image. So we'll look at what's in there. Oop, let's do dollar info and spell it correctly. You can see that our marketplace image has various different properties. That SKU, so 20H2, so that's the, the version of Windows 10 with Office 365 Pro Plus. That SKU tends to change with different versions of Windows. So the previous one is 2004. You can get versions of that SKU, so that version number may change. But every time that SKU changes, we'll need to run what's in this per image SKU script again. And we'll have a look at why that is as we're running through the script. And it's really straight away here we see it, which is the new gallery image definition. Because we can see here that we've got to configure an image definition with a SKU. So we have an image definition within our shared image gallery. And that image definition will hold versions of this SKU. So if that SKU changes, you need a new image definition within your shared image gallery. We'll just create that brand new image definition. So that is the configuration of our shared image gallery complete for this SKU. Let's have a quick look at that in the portal. And there we have our image definition. So now we're moving on from configuring our shared image gallery to configuring Azure Image Builder template object. Now Azure Image Builder needs to have three things. It needs to know which image it's drawing from, how to customize that image, and then how to distribute that image. This first set of variables, parameters, and command is, as you can see, is to configure the source object. So we can see again, we've got the, the uh, info about that image with the publisher, the offer, and the SKU and we're just creating that source object. Now, we're telling Azure Image Builder how to customize that object. We can see that we've got inline command there, and this is just a copy and paste from the documentation, and we're creating a directory and then saying image builder was here and putting it into a text file in that directory. So that's the customizer. And now we're talking about how we're going to distribute that image and we're gonna distribute it into the shared image gallery and we've got that gallery image ID or that image definition ID configured. So now we know where to put it. The template then combines the source, the customization, and the distribution into one template. 
and we'll go away and create that. As soon as that's completed, we'll have a look in the portal to see what that looks like. Now, if we refresh our resource group, I don't see a build template. Uh, the reason being is because it's a hidden, it's a hidden type of object. We can see we've got our Windows 10 image, and if we have a quick look at that, we can see some general information about this builder, but we can't actually see those source customization and distribution configurations within the GUI here, which is a bit of a shame actually. We've got a builder template which, can which contains the source customization and distribution. We've also got the shared image gallery and we've configured within the shared image gallery a image definition. So per image SKU you need an image definition and an image builder. What happens per image version? Well, this now looks fairly simple, doesn't it? I'm actually going to comment that out for the time being. And we're just going to run it just with the uh, resource group and the image template. All right. So we're starting that as your image builder template. So that means we're going to take all the details in that builder template and create an image from it. I'm just going to expand the terminal there. And then we'll also have a look into our resource group. No change there. But if we look in our resource groups, we've now got a new one. Like Packer, this is an auto-generated resource group, and it is tied to that image builder object. So whilst you still have that builder object, you will use this resource group. We've created a storage account and a key vault within this resource group. Very similar to Packer, and there's a good reason for that because we're using Packer underneath the hood. Now we can see we've got a few more things in the resource group. And interesting, we've got something that did not appear when we used Packer in episode one, which is the network security group. Now remember we're using WinRM to talk to our Windows box. And we can see we have got a nicely, it is a public IP, but at least it's firewalled very harshly and only allowing in that Wim, WinRM inbound from the Azure Image Builder source IP. Unlike the defaults in Packer, which just had a open IP, open public IP address. Now we've got a couple of extra things in. And this is uh, all we'll uh, get in this resource group. And we can see now that we're pulling up a virtual machine. And this is going to be used to boot, run the customizer steps that we configured in the builder. And then it's going to sysprep it. And then we're going to take that image and put it into our shared image gallery. If we have a look at the specs of this. The default for a um, image builder VM is a standard D1 V2. And we can also see that the virtual network and subnet are auto generated via the, uh, the Azure image builder service as well. Now this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to speed this up for you. So we've cut out a little bit of uh, deployment time there and we've finished deploying our image. Let's have a quick look 
inside the portal and we can see that now we have a new image version inside our resource group. We have still got our other resource group around, the uh, temporary resource group, but now it only has a storage account. Now in there you can find uh, some logs and in fact there's a VHD in there. Um, explore that in the next episode. But let's have a look at this image and we can see that the replication is completed and everything has succeeded. And now we can create a VM or create a WVD host pool from this image. We previously commented out that no wait parameter. What we're going to do is we're going to go again because our per image is, is just this script, right? Everything else is per, um, per skew or, or once only. So let's see what happens if we have the no wait um, parameter included. All right, well, immediately our PowerShell um, control is returned. And <clears throat> what's happening? Well, instead of holding up that uh, the, uh, the thread waiting for uh, the deployment to finish, which could be uh, a very long time, we've returned control. Now, this will be important later on. Um, whether it's via ARM template or no way, it doesn't matter, but returning control and setting that job running is, is a nice thing to be able to do. So now let's have a look at the monitoring because we can actually see how that is doing. Because if we run this, we can see there isn't a provisioning error message. So Essentially, what is configured in our builder was correct. We knew it was. We've already pushed out an image on that version. And our last run status and uh, substate is running. So it's doing what it needs to do and it's building. And what that will be doing is going to the um, existing staging resource group, which previously just had that storage account in. And it will be populating that again with key vaults and everything like that. In fact, let's have a look. Let's have a quick look at that. And there we go. We have all of that populated with the new image, etc. When that's finished, and that starts um, grabbing that image and putting it into the shared image gallery. The last run status run substate will change from building to um, distributing. And then um, once it's finished, we'll have a look what that says. So again, uh, I'm going to cut out all of the deployment time and we'll come back once that's finished. So our second image has just deployed. We can see that I, um, I uh, monitored the deployment previously and we changed from the building to distributing. Let's have another look at this and see what's happened. Now we've got succeeded and succeeded. Let's check in the portal. We have now got just the storage account left again within the temporary resource group. And within our actual resource group, we now have two images. Let's check within our gallery. We can see our image definition. And now we can see the two images we've created from our marketplace image. The name uh, is two versions. Uh, they are automated in terms of their creation, but they are in the correct order, so they, uh, they are consecutive. Now then, we have one last thing to do before we close out this episode, which is to look at the cleanup. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this um, builder template. 
and effectively one of the things that that's going to do is not just remove that hidden builder template from within our uh, resource group it's actually going to remove the temporary resource group as well now bear in mind that when you do this it's going to remove that storage account within the temporary resource group and that storage account holds all of your logs so I think that probably in a production environment if you're doing this as part of the cleanup script you should grab all the logs from your um, staging resource group and put them somewhere reasonable before you go and delete the builder template that's going to take a couple of minutes again we're just going to pause while that happens so that's now complete let's have a quick look in the portal we can see that that uh, image template builder has disappeared from our normal resource group and the staging resource group has disappeared from our subscription wonderful thank you so much for listening and watching if you enjoyed this episode please hit that like button and if you want to see some more please subscribe